the Biden administration's now disbanded disinformation governance board is suing Fox News. That is Nina Jankowitz, who the New York Times described as a Russian disinformation expert. She claims she was demeaned and defamed by the network in highly personal terms last year. Now, Jankowitz's suit is similar to Dominion's against Fox News, at least in her own view. She specifically cites that case in her lawsuit and claims that Fox's reporting about her is, quote, consistent with Fox's practices in other contexts, including in its election denialism and the related defamation of Dominion voting system. So Nina Jankowitz is someone we criticized a whole lot in the show. I hope she's not coming for us next. I think we also said... (laughs) Very, very critical things about her and uh, her and this and this board, which, you know, they claim did not would not have actual enforcement ability was just going to be an advisory board. But we've seen from the Twitter files and so many other things we've seen that these so these advisors in the government were putting pressure on social media companies to censor speech relating to the election, relating to covid. And in fact, she was was one of those people or would have been one of those you know, intelligence officials who wrongly called the Hunter Biden story as misinformation. And then and then, you know, those people that was used to justify this vast suppression. So I don't I don't think this lawsuit has like a snowball's chance in hell of succeeding. But uh, but what do you think, Jessica? I am quite not sure if it has any similar nature to the Dominion lawsuit. I mean, now we have a legal precedent, Mm -hmm. but based on what I'm seeing of what's been said by folks at Fox that she's suing over, the highlights should be the things that are the most severe, and they really don't seem like that to me. (laughs) Uh, Hannity said her job was to silence anyone who criticizes the Biden administration. Is that defamation of character? I wouldn't like it if somebody said that about me, but I don't know if that's defamation. Uh, And Tucker Carlson warned, get men with guns to tell you to shut up. Kind of sounds like a violent threat. Is it defamation of character? I'm really not sure. Uh, It could be a long shot, but I'm glad that it's going to use some of Fox's legal resources and time, to be honest. Mm. She wants to argue it's hyperbole, fine, but you're allowed to be hyperbolic in your criticism. I mean, you should, especially of government officials, of which she was one at the time. Yeah, and these two people that she cites are opinion hosts. I mean, they're journalists, but they share their opinions all the time. So the idea that they wouldn't be able to criticize her harshly is pretty ridiculous. And Robbie, the point about her being a government official is huge because if you can't criticize one of the arguably most powerful people in the country, from your TV show, then who really can you criticize? Basically, free speech gets completely diminished at that point. And this is a woman who got a lot of things wrong, including the Hunter Biden laptop story, but also she was all in on the Trump Alpha Bank story, you know, the, the claims that he had all of these ties and real estate deals with Russian banks, which were misreported by the mainstream media. She claimed uh, that uh, critical race theory wasn't being taught in schools. I mean, all of her TikToks, if you scroll through them over the years, contained false information. And yet she was supposedly in charge of weeding out disinformation. And the Twitter files is another important point to bring up, Robbie, because the Twitter files did show a coordination between government and social media websites. Um, So I don't think this lawsuit is going anywhere. I think it's ridiculous. Um, If anything, I see just based on her social media presence and the way she reacted to the criticism, She's just a very sensitive person. Which is the last kind of person I would want in charge of, of, they say that was not going to be enforcing any kind of thing, it's just advisory, but I don't want advisors in government who default to a kind of sensitive, knee-jerk hostility to what they describe as misinformation, and then their definition of misinformation is just this all-encompassing term where they've gotten, you know, they've gotten things wrong, or, you know, things that are legitimately, that should be within the realm of debate, and Nita Jankowitz type people have this framing that misinformation has so overwhelmed our senses, has so taken over our social media networks, and this is the crisis of our time, and it must be confronted carefully by the government. There's, there's not, and, and I mean, the fact that she's suing over this is almost indicative of this whole problem, that she doesn't like what people said about her. She thinks there should be a right to silence them, to silence an entire media corporation, Fox News, for, for what is ultimately a difference of opinion or a difference of how you would characterize her role. She, like, she doesn't think you should be able to to talk about that. That's that's what's sinister about this um, 
uh, for me. I, I, I you know, I, I don't, I, as you said, Jessica, it's not, it doesn't see, you're the, it, it, she didn't put for, maybe there's more in it, maybe we can find clearer instances of someone saying something that was, you know, real, that was a, um, an actual, not an opinion, but, uh, but, but a fact or something like that. But again, she was a, she was a government official. Shouldn't, th shouldn't there be a high bar to, um, you know, to government officials being able to say, well, you can't say that about me. Yeah, I think this is a, a tricky situation because we've seen the intertwinement of media as an institution with government since the dawn of the nation. When the United States was trying to take Hawaii as a colony, for example, in the late 1800s, you had William Randolph Hearst get into the newspaper business. His family is still in business. William Randolph uh, Hearst III is running it, Hearst Productions. Uh, and so when you think about them running misinformation pieces about people in Hawaii being savages and the United States needs to go and intervene there. Many members of Congress making speeches on the floor with these newspaper articles backing what they're saying up. Uh, this intertwinement has always existed. Many of those people having stock uh, in sugar companies as well, wanting to extract and export resources that they were going to then take from Hawaii, taking it as a colony after founding the country as you know, this is the nation that broke free from the colonization of the British Empire. And so this has been true since literally the first days of our country, that media and government have been intertwined, pushing certain narratives and pushing certain agendas. And so do I think uh, that this is a, a breaking point or a fracture between the establishment in the United States and the media? Not really. I really don't. Uh, I think this lawsuit is probably a little bit more Orwellian just because she's someone in government. And unfortunately, Russian misinformation since the Cold War era has frequently just been things that are inconvenient for the United States foreign policy establishment. And so I think that the political motivation here uh, is not pure. I don't think yeah. she's suing for the sole purpose of defamation. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love bringing in the historical perspective, especially for people who say that you know misinformation has never been a bigger problem and is some pressing crisis we're dealing with now. William Randolph Hearst, who you just mentioned, you know, he started the Cuban American War to you know to sell more newspapers over the over the you know false idea that they, what was it the Maine right that they that they attacked. Um, you you furnish the pictures, I'll furnish the war. That kind of stuff. Like there's a there's a long history of people having access to bad information and. And it, it, but suddenly that has become um, the crisis of our times, which I, I think it's, you know, it's an effort to erode the first, like they're doing it deliberately, right, to, to erode the First Amendment yeah. so that they can, yeah. I think that's right. I mean, there's people in this country who believe that they have a monopoly on truth um, and they don't want to have debate because it would shatter their illusion that they are so enlightened that they have access to information and facts that other people don't have access to. And I know the internet gets a lot of flack um, for the rise of misinformation. But on the flip side of that, when you look at our country's history, our media ecosystem was controlled mostly by a few powerful outlets. I mean, people always go back to the golden days of objectivity in the 50s and 60s when everyone was getting their news from basically the three broadcast networks and their nightly newscasts. Um, now people have the opportunity to shop for alternative sources of information, which I think at the base level is a good thing. Yeah, like rising, <laughs> like uh, all that's out there. And sometimes that means there's gonna be information out there that's wrong, but the, I, the danger, exactly as you said, Amber, is just that when you just have a few powerful media organizations that they all cover the same thing, and they, you know, they, what if they're all getting it wrong? What if they're manufacturing consensus for like horrific policy, foreign policies, domestic policies that are actually out of step with what the people want, but are just you know good in the interest of those Company. Like, I don't think that was a better, it, it, people do romance, or maybe those companies are the ones romancing it. They're trying to force that, that romance on you because they don't like all the competition they have now. But I, I think it's a, you know, it's a good thing that we can get information out on all these different platforms, including TikTok, where I know you're very active, Jessica. Unlike Amber yes. and I, who are boomers, <laughs> I guess. Nobody sue me for defamation based on my TikToks. But I think it's also <laughs> interesting. We live in such a litigious society. Is this going to be the method of content moderation, just a lawsuit? Afterwards, mm. that's not sustainable. We need to think of a, a better, more democratic method uh, than whoever can afford a lawyer. Mm. All right, we'll have more rising right after this.